Hello and welcome to this next exercise, another multiple linear regression. So uh, once again, we've we've got a basic model that we're working with here. I have two independent variables. Uh, we're looking at a model that relates our expected salary with our years of experience and our age. So salary is measured in thousands of dollars, uh, and age and experience are measured in years. Now, you might see that and think, um, well, I don't know what you'll think, but you might think there's something a little bit funny about using these two independent variables, experience and age. You might think that, well, those are going to be very similar, age and years of experience. The older you are, the more experience you're likely to have. This exercise is going to be actually looking at something called multi Collinearity. Hopefully, I spelled that right. Multicollinearity is something that can arise when you have a very high level of correlation uh, between your independent variables. So, this wasn't an issue in module 14 when we were looking at simple linear regression, but now it can be. We might have you know, many independent variables, and it's possible that they're all correlated with that dependent variable. So you would expect that if, if a set of independent variables, if they're all correlated with the same dependent variable, you would expect there to be some correlation between them as well. And so there's always it's expected that there will be some correlation. A problem arises when there's too much correlation between your independent variables. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. Let's talk, uh, let's get into the requirements of this problem. So part A, write the estimated regression equation. This is uh, hopefully relatively straightforward. I have all of our necessary coefficients are right here. So our expected salary or our estimate of the average salary uh, can be determined by this equation, negative 27.1 minus 2.24 experience plus 4.55 age. So that might be a weird result as well. At, at least it's counterintuitive uh, that there's a negative coefficient on experience. So what this is saying is that as my experience increases, that has a negative effect on my salary. Hmm, that's not very motivational, is it? As I get older, however, that's a positive relationship. As I get older, that my age has a positive relation or a positive effect on my salary. Oh okay, well, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. Uh, let, we'll come back to this. This is all kind of part of the problem of multicollinearity that we're going to be looking at. You might get some interesting results. Uh, so we've got our estimated regression equation, equation R squared. So again, we can look at the R squared uh, and the adjusted R squared. So that R squared is telling me uh, SSR over SST, which is here's our SSR and here's our SST. So that's 0.41. So our regression explains 41% of the variation uh, in, in uh, our dependent variable. Our adjusted R squared, it's dropped quite a bit. So the inclusion of one of those additional um, independent variables has had a fairly substantial negative effect on the R squared. Remember the adjusted R squared, we're being penalized, uh, a degrees of freedom penalty really, when we add another independent variable, so remember k, that's the number of parameters that we're estimating in this model, k is equal to three, so when we add another independent variable, if its inclusion uh, fails to contribute a significant amount to the R squared, that can cause the R squared to fall if the addition of an independent variable um, doesn't significantly contribute. So here we've seen a, a quite a big drop from the R squared to the adjusted R squared, which means that one of those variables in that model um, has had negative, fairly substantial negative effect, a 25% drop in the R squared. So something's fishy uh, here as well. So that's another little signal, something funny is going on. We've only got two independent variables and the um, one of those two has had a very negative effect on our R squared, on the adjusted R squared. So that's okay, we have, uh, we've got B done, so A is done, 
B is done. Interpret the p-values and confidence interval estimates. Okay, now we might start to see some interesting things. When we look at our p-values uh, on individual, let's look at the individual parameter estimates. So these all correspond with a, a null and alternative hypothesis that the individual parameter is equal to zero or not equal to zero. So what we've found here, let's let's just ignore that intercept. I'm not interested in knowing that the line goes through the origin. Let's just look at those two slopes. So what this means, let me write out, or well, let's just look at the model. When we're looking at tests for individual uh, parameter significance, what we're considering, or what the test considers really, is given what age has to contribute in explaining why, does experience contribute anything more in addition to what age contributes? Does experience contribute anything more? The answer here, with a p-value of 0.34, we do not reject, so the answer is no. As long as age is in the model, experience doesn't belong in the model. It has nothing else to contribute. Now if we look also at age, now we're saying, well, given what experience has to contribute to the model, to, to predicting salary, does age have anything additional to contribute? And once again, if our alpha here is 0.05, once again, the answer is no. With experience in the model, age doesn't need to be there. So that's starting to tell us something, right? Especially now, if we go and we look at the test for overall model significance, where here I have the hypotheses beta 1 and beta 2 are both equal to 0, the alternative not all are 0. Well, look at the p-value on that, and this is our p-value, is 0 0.01. Again, with an alpha of 0.05, well, now we reject. And so here we are rejecting, and now we're saying these, not, these aren't all zero. But in our test for individual parameter significance, where we looked at just these two here, we said, well, they, they are, each individually, they are zero. So what's happening here? Well, it has everything to do with the fact that each of these t-tests, each of these individual parameter tests, is dependent on what the other has already contributed. So as I said before, with, with experience in the model, so with experience in the model, age has nothing else to contribute. With experience, uh, with age in the model, experience has nothing else to contribute. So with one of them in the model, the other is meaningless. So what this is telling us is that, well, maybe only one of them should be in the model because they are, oops, they are statistically significant. They are contributing to the prediction of average salary. But individually, neither one has anything additional to contribute beyond what the other one already has. This is textbook multicollinearity. Okay, so what we can do, let's, um, well, we can go through our interval estimates. They're not really all that interesting because, again, we fail to reject. So individually, neither of these have anything significant to contribute to the model. I can't say at the 95% level of significance, I can't say that uh, they're different from zero. So here's our part D. This is what I, I'm trying to get to because it's the most interesting part of this problem. Here we have a scenario where only one of our, uh, uh, our independent variable really matters. What I, what I always show my students, and I'm, I'm never sure if this is entirely helpful. To me, this makes sense, and so I think maybe it makes sense to my students too. So I'll try it out with you too. If, if we imagine that this distance, that this distance here is representative of SST, the total variation uh, in our dependent variable. What we want when we put together a, a multiple regression, what we want is to have individual independent variables that can each contribute to explaining some portion of that variation. So if this is the total variation in my dependent variable, what I would want if I have two independents, as I have in this case, 
what I would want is for, let's say, x1 explains this, captures that amount of variation in the dependent variable, and x2 maybe captures this. So what this, what this demonstrates is that, well, there's still some variation that is random that we can't capture. We'll never get 100% of it. We won't get an r squared equal to 1. It's mathematically possible, but realistically unlikely. So there'll always be some variation that we don't capture. And we'll almost always have some correlation between x1 and x2, meaning they'll always have some overlap in their ability to explain the dependent variable. But what we want here is that each of our independent variables are contributing a, a unique contribution to explaining why. So this, if we get rid of all these other little lines here, oops, get rid of that one and that one, this is sort of our best case scenario, that each of these two independent variables individually have something significant to contribute. Now, what we have here is a scenario where individually, neither one of these uh, has anything additional to contribute beyond what the other one has. But together, they are explaining some of the variation and why. So if we come down, if I were to redraw this, what we might have now is that, well, let's say x1, so uh, our experience. So years of experience is capturing this much. And age, well, age is maybe capturing uh, this, this much. There's x2. So what does this tell us? Well, there's definitely some variation in, in y in our average salary that is omitted. There's random error. Like I said, we'll never get 100% of it. But here what we can see is that x1 and x2 well, they're both capturing that same information in average salary. And so this is why the F test came back significant, because together they are capturing some significant portion of the variation in Y. But individually, they're each capturing the same information in Y. So what this means is we're probably better off eliminating one of those independent variables. And generally, we would start with the one that has the highest p-value. So uh, here we would get rid of experience, which was our x1. And so with that one gone, x2 is, would be left. x2 is still capturing all of that same variation. And I'd be willing to bet, based on these results, especially based on that f test, that statistical significance is there, uh, if we were to redo the regression with just age left in the model, that p-value would suddenly fall, probably something close to zero. Okay, so this is one, probably the, I don't know, the easiest way to spot multicollinearity, although it becomes a little bit more difficult when we have uh, even more independent variables uh, in that model. So that's all I wanted to talk about for this exercise, a little problem of multicollinearity that can arise when we have uh, independent variables that are very highly correlated. Actually, one more little note. Ugh, there's always one more thing. One more little thing that I want to add to this is that as far as using it, in other words, you know, okay, we have identified multicollinearity. Peter's calling it a problem. Why is it a problem? Well, it's less of a problem uh, if our intent behind estimating this equation. If our intent is to use it for prediction purposes, uh, it's less of an issue. And in other words, give me values for years of experience and age, and I'll estimate uh, an average salary for an individual that has so many years of experience and, and age. But if our intent for this estimated regression equation is that I want to understand the marginal effect of each of those independent variables uh, on my dependent, on salary, well now there's a, this is where the problem really lies. Because these now are no longer what we'd call unbiased. So these are no longer valid predictors of beta 1 or beta 2. So we can no longer use those coefficients uh, as valid, as unbiased estimators 
of those population coefficients. Again, if we're using it for, for estimation of y, it's less of an issue. This one is biased down, this one is biased up. So it's, it won't be as big of a problem. But again, if we're interested primarily in those marginal effects, uh, just interpreting those coefficients, it's no longer valid. We can no longer do that with multicollinearity uh, present in the model. Okay, now I think that's all I wanted to talk about for this exercise. So good, thank you for watching. Uh, let's move on and we'll just do some more. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.